Okay, guys, so the last video, uh, part four, went over day one and day two of the three days and three nights, so that leaves one more day, which is the third day. Um, and of course, that's the day that Yahshua HaMashiach, our Savior, rose from the tomb. So I just want to just give a real, real quick synopsis um, of that third day. So, um... On Nissan 14, right before the sun went down to become Nissan 15, the weekly Sabbath and the high Sabbath of the Feast of Unleavened Bread was when our Savior was laid to rest. Upon the setting of the sun at Nissan 14, it is now the Sabbath, becoming Nissan 15, and his body laid at rest as the body is commanded to rest on this day. Since we now know that he had risen when the women went to the tomb, he was most likely resurrected into his physical glorified body right as they got there, in the twinkling of an eye. It would have happened at a split second and they would not even have perceived it. And if what I have understood is correct, then his body lay in the tomb for only 12 hours. That's one third of the 36 hour period. Remember that one third. His spirit, of course, was going about the Father's business in Sheol, taking back the keys to life eternal for all, all mankind, putting hell on notice that it had been defeated at the cross. Hallelujah. <laughs> and as the per the scriptures listed in the previous videos, his spirit would not be left in hell, as it was reunited with his body and therefore would not see corruption. What remained unto the morning was burned with the purifying fire of the Holy Spirit, and he resurrected. So uh, it was right before sunset when his body was placed in the tomb, or as it was becoming Nisan 15, or the first day of unleavened bread, also the weekly Sabbath, because every weekly Sabbath falls on the 15th day of every month. Even though his body was taken off of the cross at 3 p.m., he would have been carried to a place of preparation. Washed, his body would have been washed and wrapped in a linen burial cloth. So technically, his body had his body had not been laid to rest as of yet because they were preparing it for burial. That began when he was laid in the tomb. So as they were preparing his body for burial. The lambs that had been slaughtered at the temple for the sacrifice of the Passover were also being prepared for the Passover meal. So it was 6 p.m., beginning of Nisan 15, and then he has risen by daybreak of the following morning. So it's still Nisan 15. Um, the one third of the 36 hours or, or 12 hours is confirmed in the book of Jonah and we're going to go over that when we get to it but before I get to the book of Jonah teaching and how it is a, a pointer right to the Passover and the events and how many actual days he was in the heart of the earth um, I'll show that uh, probably in the next couple videos um, the number 12 being a number for those who are chosen and anointed um, since there were 12 apostles and now I'm going to show you how that number 12 directly correlates to Yeshua being um, in the place of death or Sheol okay so here we go um, this is the meanings of the words uh, in the Strong's Concordance in the Greek and the Hebrew and the meaning of them so the Greek G12 in Strong's Concordance is the word abyssos um, what we know as the abyss or the bottomless pit the deep um, the immeasurable depth of very deep gulf or chasm in the lowest parts of the earth 
used as a common receptacle of the dead and especially as the abode of demons. And Romans 10.7 gives an example. It says, Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. And in the Hebrew, in the Strong's Concordance, H12 is Abdan, which means destruction, destroying, perishing, and it comes from the word Abad, to perish. If you notice here, in the H12, the Abdan is the same name as in Revelation 9-11, Abdan. It's, it's where that word, that name comes from, the Hebrew Abdan. And Revelation 9-11, as they, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abadan. This is where the word Abdan in the Hebrew comes from, and it's pronounced the same, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So, as you see here, I mean, I just, I was like, well, the Ruach put it, laid it in my spirit to look up the Strong's Concordance numbers for 12. And I don't think it's a coincidence that both of these in the Concordance are referring to the same thing. Where in the Greek it's mentioning the actual place the bottomless pit and in the Hebrew it's naming the angel over the bottomless pit so obviously that number 12 having to do with death and hell so I just wanted to show you that before we move on to the next part okay so as I said um, the concordance number 12 in the Strong's Concordance um, for the Greek and the Hebrew both mean the same thing basically death and hell and in my opinion it's one more indication um, and, and confirmation that the three days and three nights were broken down into three 12 hour periods or quote unquote days um, and the whole process of events that included the 36 hours that Yeshua entered I'm sorry, that he endured, we're all having to do with death and hell in, in his circumstance. Um, not that the number 12 means that all the time, just for um, in this circumstance and referring to the concordance. And it's no coincidence that the number 12 in the concordance means exactly that. So we know that death and hell refers to a kingdom and the spirit entities that govern that realm. And you can call it darkness, evil, the bottomless pit, the abyss, or Sheol. Basically, this kingdom and its rulers were the very ones that Yahshua came to defeat. And hallelujah, he accomplished his mission. All praise and glory to our king. So the actual darkness that Yahshua experienced on the earth on not not before he went into the heart of the earth was a total of 18 hours and when I say darkness I mean evil um, spiritual darkness as well as physical and just as there were 18 physical hours of darkness that were made light for Joshua on the earth on uh, during Joshua's long day there were 18 hours of darkness for Yahshua which is an opposite mirror reflection of Joshua's long day. And in the following slides, we'll show those hours of darkness. Okay, so first off, don't be confused by the 18 hours thing. I'm not going from 36 hours to 18 hours. Um, what I'm trying to point out is that it was split into two, that 36 hour period, 18 hours of it was like normal things going on there was no no nothing evil had happened yet and then 18 hours were is where all the darkness the evil fell upon Yahshua whether it was spiritual or physical or both um, it was split into into two separate parts so do you see how 
intricate this is and, and like I said the nesting doll thing because it was a 36 hour period but 18 hours of it was the actual evil that fell upon them and then the 18 other 18 hours were quote unquote light where it was everything was going on as normal he hadn't experienced any of the darkness yet because that didn't really begin until well I'll get into that <laughs> let's just go over this slide first okay um, this is talking about the first day of the three days and three nights which we have called first Passover these are the physical hours of darkness on Nissan 14 um, which began at 12 a.m. when he was arrested in the garden and then went all the way to the following day and ended at 3 p.m. when he gave up the ghost that is a total of 15 hours so this is just for, for day one the other three hours that make up the 18 is on day two and we'll see that in the next slide so it began at 12 a.m. our Lord is taken by physical force into custody um, so obviously the darkness has begun he's been physically handled and arrested 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. he is smitten by the officers of the Pharisees they took him into custody and when he was standing before them the officers that's when they were physically assaulting him and spitting in his face and, and those terrible things 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. he is awaiting his trial at sunrise in a jail cell so he's being held prisoner so you know evil is being done to him even though he's an innocent man and then 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. this time frame includes the beating and the whipping and the actual crucifixion I'm sorry I get choked up when I talk about that and then it ends at 3 p.m. where he gives up the ghost and now his work is finished for that day for day one so as you see each time frame that I've given here it shows the darkness and when I refer to darkness I'm talking about evil you know um, the workings of Satan and the sins of the world being poured on him that's what I mean by darkness so on day one it equaled 15 hours of darkness um, and that was pretty much you know that was the majority of it day one was like the main the main the majority of those events for the crucifixion so now next we'll we'll go on to second Passover or day two okay so um, second Passover or day two uh, physical hours of darkness now don't get confused like I said when I say physical hours I don't mean dark as a nighttime dark I mean physical hours of evil these hours were from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. and that's three hours so you add three hours from day two onto the 15 of day one that equals 18 hours so it began at 9 p.m. on day two uh, because that's when they went in the garden during even though Satan had entered into Judas they, they were having their meal there was no evil had started yet um, it, it began but not in person not on a personable level with Yahshua because he was having the meal with his disciples and it there was it was good so uh, mark 14 34 proclaims that this was this is where the darkness began because it was in reverse order to the day before since in the normal space of time this day should have been first leading up to the crucifixion um, so the events of second Passover should have happened first but they didn't because he did it in reverse so mark 14 34 says and Jesus saith well it says and and saith unto them meaning Jesus my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death tarry ye here and watch um, this is when they're 
in the garden. They had just walked into the garden. And unto, the word unto in this verse refers to from this point on up to the point of his death. The spiritual darkness had started, causing him to feel much physical anxiety. So they just walked into the garden, and he's saying, he, he is proclaiming himself that his soul is exceeding sorrowful unto his death. In other words, he's given us a clue that from this moment on, right now, there's going to be spiritual and physical evil upon me because he says up into the the um, point of his of his death uh, by the word unto and we know that it caused him physical anxiety because he was sweating blood as he was praying in the garden and the sins of the world were being poured on him and he so from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. this is the time frame in the garden and there is an actual medical term for the um, I don't know what you call it <laughs> the process that happens when one sweats blood is it's because of tremendous um, anxiety put upon a person so much that it that's what causes them to do that and that term is called hematidrosis so as the sins of the world were poured upon him he was so full of anxiety and his soul being in turmoil that he sweat blood and then it ended at 12 a.m where he was arrested and that's where day one began so if you're confused by any of that you'll have to go back and look at the charts or watch the video again so I'm gonna um, let's see maybe we have time for one more slide and then I'll cut this off so that I can get it up this evening so as you see only the hours of darkness in the physical had to be reversed the 18 hours because once he gave up the ghost his work was finished he's not there's no more darkness being placed upon him um, he is now victorious over death and hell even though he went there he was not being held against his will he went to receive the righteous that were in paradise on the other side of the chasm to himself and they were now escorted to heaven so as you see that is why the other 18 hours um, are not included in the hours of darkness because once he gave up the ghost he was finished his work was finished okay guys so I'm gonna cut this off here so um, we can get it up and get it loaded and I will see you guys in part six God bless and I love you. Bye-bye.